happy that all of you stayed. I'm surprised. I mean, the, the information that has been covered in the last presentation, it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't a good, nice story, so to speak. <laughs> so I'm really happy that you stayed. It's, it's kind of a surprise, but I'm really happy and, uh, and I hope this will be a blessing for you as well. Because in the, in the previous um, presentation, we, we covered what? We covered a one world government, a one world religion, as the Bible prophecy uh, in the book of Revelation is talking about. But this world religion will also have a head. And it was none other than the Pope. But this universal Christ would satisfy all the, all the world religions. Didn't we read that? And we... We discover that we must move as quickly as possible to a one world government, a one world religion, under a one world leader. Robert Miller. We also discovered that Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, this uh, Jesuit priest who was the who laid the foundation for New Age, he said that religions must unite upon a universal Christ who satisfies them all. So there will come a universal Christ who will satisfy and unite all religions. There is also another quote from him from the book Christianity and Evolution. He said, I believe that the Messiah whom we await, uh, whom we all without any doubt await, is the universal Christ, that is to say, the Christ of evolution. So basically the question that we need to raise is now is, who is this, Je who is this Christ? Is it Jesus? Christ or is it another Christ because we need to understand this it is a very very important and crucial for us so before we go and read this occult writings um, let us see what the Word of God has to say about it first of all in John chapter 14 verse, verse 6 Jesus said unto, the, unto him I am the way let us read I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What is Jesus saying here? Is he a truth? Is he a life? And a way? Or is he the? There is a definite article. And in the Greek you find it as well. There is a definite article. The way, the truth, and the life. And this is a quite radical statement by Jesus, it is, to say that I am the truth. Now when we live in a society where you say, well, <laughs> one, uh, bless you, <laughs> where you say uh, one plus one is two, but one plus one can also, and can also be uh, 2,572. And in, in, in the society we live in, you say, both are right. Because we have pluralism, we have postmodernism, we have all kinds of philosophy, foolish philosophy. But Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. Now, this Jesus is in John chapter 1, verse 1 and 3. If, if you want to read with me, you, you can do it. Let us read. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see that the word was God in the beginning. And it's interesting how John is, is, is writing that, you know, in, the, in Genesis, Moses says, in the beginning, God. Now, John is saying, in the beginning was the Word, but the Word was what? God. And this God created everything, just as in the account of Genesis. So we see that they are writing about the same things. But John actually goes deeper into the creation, as, and he also identifies who his, who his creator is. And who is it? Verse 14, and the Word was made flesh. So this creator that created everything, he became flesh. He became a human. 
And it is none other than Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the way, Jesus is God, Jesus is the Creator. Jesus, uh, Jesus 18, John 18, <laughs> John 18, uh, verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not of this. So what is Jesus saying here? His kingdom is? Of this world, or what is it saying? No, it is not. not of this world. In the last presentation, what did we see? Hmm? United Nations and the United World Religions, they are trying to build the kingdom of God here on earth. earth. But Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. So we see here that New Age is trying to... to to put forward what we would call this uh, one uh, millennium, the millennium kingdom, this 1,000 year kingdom, which the Bible says will not be on earth, but will be where? In heaven. In heaven. But they misapply it, and they say it will be on earth. But Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Sorry. Sorry. Now we have seen who this Jesus is. Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the one who has died for you and I. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. And you come to the Father through the Son. Now, but we need to raise another question. How will, because in the New Testament, the, the second coming is, is of a very, very great, um, it is very important, it's of great significance, right? Because one out of every 30 verse in the New Testament points to the second coming. So we need to raise the, this important question, which is, how will He, Jesus Christ, come back according to the Bible? So let us answer this uh, important um, question. How will Jesus come back according to the Bible? First of all, we read in Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they had, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their side. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two, hand, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Who? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as he has seen him go into heaven. So who will return? This same Jesus. This same, exactly. It is important to understand this. This same Jesus will come back. The same Jesus that was upon this earth 2,000 years ago is the same Jesus that is coming back. Is it? Have you? Good, good, good. Because it is important. Because now we are looking at what the Bible says. But we will look at what these other people are saying. And if you know what the Bible says, as we talk in the, uh, between the, in, in the break, to the law and to the testimony, as Isaiah 8.20 says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. We also see in Revelation 1.7, uh, Behold, He is coming, with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. So what we discover here in this verse is that when Jesus is coming, it will be worldwide. Every eye will see him. And you will not see Jesus in the newspaper that Jesus has come, or you will turn and you will uh, turn on your TV and uh, you will look at the BBC or uh, the CNN and it says with big letters, Jesus has come back. Uh -huh. The Bible says that He is coming in the clouds and every eye will see Him. Alright? So first, this same Jesus and this same Jesus will come in the clouds 
and every eye will see him. And I hope that God is going to give us that wonderful opportunity that we are alive when Jesus comes back. Hmm. That's the thought. Matthew 24, 30. The Bible says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So how will the Son of Man come? First of all, He will come in the cloud, He will, he will appear in the cloud in the heaven, and the Son of Man will come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will come as the majestic King. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He will not come as the Lamb or a high priest, but as a king. And he is coming. Verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So here we see another sign that Jesus, when he comes, his angels will follow him. I mean, when was the last time you saw an angel? I'm sorry, who is it? When Jesus comes, all the angels of heaven will be with him. I mean, you can't miss that. You can't miss that. I mean, how could you? Right? Like, the, the, for, uh, hey, uh, see, see, yeah? Uh, did you know that Jesus came to uh, yesterday with uh, millions of angels? No. No, we will know it. He says, send his angels, and also, the second coming of Christ will be audible. We will hear it. A great sound of the trumpet. And these angels shall gather together his elect from the four winds. What do you think that means? Mm -hmm. From the four winds. Four corners. Four corners, four corners, four corners of the world. Because these people will be everywhere. And we also see that when Jesus comes, 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 and 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. So Jesus himself will run. <laughs> and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, he who are, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now this is an important passage. Because it tells us different things. It first of all tells us that Lord, the Jesus will himself descend. And he will, it will be audible. Jesus will say something like, Come my elect or come my people. And the dead in Christ will rise. Right? So that there will be a resurrection. And we who are alive, we will... We will together with the dead in Christ who are now resurrected. We will meet the Lord where? In the air. So, my question is this. Will Jesus Christ come down on this earth when he comes back? Yes. No. Jesus will not come down to this earth and touch it. But Jesus will be up there. And we, in I don't know how, I don't know how. But in some supernatural way, we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Some translations read, in the space. And then, we will go to heaven. I'm looking forward to that day. Are you? Yes. So, so let us recap. The second coming will be visible. It will be audible, it will be a literal event, it is not a um, spiritualized way, it is a literal event, it is a personal event, every eye shall see him, and it is a worldwide event. Because we saw that the angels are going out, coming for the elect, who are at the four corners of the earth. Alright, so this is what the Bible says. The same Jesus will come back. Now let us take a look at the other side, because this is fascinating. Now, Ruth Montgomery, 
One of the heralds of the new age tells us that her spirit guides stated in the 21st century the soul of another perfected being will return to human incarnation. So it is not Jesus Christ who will come back to this earth. It is another perfected being. You know what they are saying? First of all, that Jesus is not the one who will come back. And second, that Jesus, or, or rather this being, is even better than Jesus. Another perfected being. Montgomery's walking friend, Michael, and it is <laughs> interesting to see that, what, what does it mean, Michael? The name Michael means? He who is like God. So this Montgomery's friend, which is actually a demon, is called Michael. This is blasphemy. He who is like God. And this demon uh, said, or uh, Montgomery was channeling, and also wrote, Christ will arrive at the beginning of a new era after the ship and the chaos. We saw, we said, Ordo al Kao, from order comes, no, from chaos comes order. Yes. So you have some problems, but after it you will have peace and, and all that. But listen to this, but it will not be the man who was once incarnate and known as Jesus. It will be another one. New Age teaches us that it is not the same Jesus that will come back, but it is another Christ that will come. Can you see the difference? Bible says the same Jesus, New Age says, uh -uh. no, no, no. And Tom C. Lyle, writing about the fabulous New Age, says the appearance of another Messiah has also been anticipated. I thought Jesus was the Messiah. Not for them. Because they don't, they don't accept him. And so who is this Messiah? Because we can clearly see, we can, I mean, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that there is, you know, the Bible says one thing and the New Age says another thing. So this universal Christ is not Jesus Christ. From a theological, but also from a logical perspective, these two point of views, they do not go together. If Jesus said that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life, and that this Jesus would come back, so who is this another Messiah? Who is this uh, another wise one? Who is this another perfected being? Now, you're going to go on a roller coaster that you have never gone on before. <laughs> Let us see what Alice A. Bailey is saying on this. We must seek information from them. First of all, we said in the last presentation that uh, they started a group called World Goodwill, an official non-governmental organization within the United Nations. They state the stated aim of this group is to cooperate in the world of preparation for the reappearance of the Christ. So this non official non-governmental organization within the United Nations, their aim and their task and their focus is to make the way prepared for this Christ. It almost sounds like John the Baptist. <coughs> they say, we need to prepare the way for the Christ. Now, which Christ? Apparently not Jesus Christ, that's for sure. We have already seen it. So who is this Christ? Now it gets more and more fascinating. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> now, this is from Lucy's Trust. And uh, Lucy's Trust, as you know, it was, the, it was originally called Lucifer Publishing Company. And, but uh, because of the attacks from different people, they changed the name to Lucy's Trust. And they have a web page, and they write, you know, about the purpose and the objectives of this organization, World Goodwill. 
It was an organized movement founded in 1932, uh, uh, and it has three main purposes. First of all, it is to help mobilize the energy of goodwill. The second is to, uh, to cooperate in the work of preparation for the reappearance of the Christ. And number three, to educate public opinion on the causes of the major world problems and to help create the thought form of solution. Let us take a look at uh, the second part, because this is what is the most interesting part. The reappearance of the Christ. They are right. This is a time of preparation. It sounds like it is Adventist, you know, they are preparing themselves as well. Alright? This is a time of preparation, not only for a new civilization and culture in a new world order, and it is coming from their website, but also for the coming of a new spiritual dispensation. Humanity is not following an uncharted course. There is a divine, listen to this, there is a divine plan in the cosmos of which we are a part. At the end of an age, human resources and established institutions seems inadequate to meet world needs and problems. At such a time, at such a time the advent of a teacher, a spiritual leader or avatar, is anticipated and invoked by the masses of humanity in all parts of the world. So we have so big crisis that a world teacher is going to come. And this world teacher is going to help us how we can live, live better lives. Now, today, the reappearance of the world teacher, the Christ, is expected by millions. Not only by those of Christian faith, but by those of every faith who accept expect the avatar under other names, the Lord Maitreya, Krishna, Messiah, Iman Bani, and Bodhisattva. Let me ask you, is this Jesus Christ? No. Because how can Jesus Christ be Maitreya, Krishna, Iman Bani, and so on? <laughs> this is incredible. Glamour and distortion surround the central fact of divine response to human need. This is inevitable but unimportant. The fact of transition into a new age is important. And how are we going to go into this new age? It is through this teacher and preparation by men and women of goodwill. And these of goodwill are the ones who, you know, if you think the same way I think, oh brother, then you are a person of goodwill. So obviously you and I, we are not brothers and sisters. But men and women of good will is needed to introduce new values for living, new standards of behavior, new attitudes of non-separateness and cooperation. Wow! You know what this is all about? Non the Bible says, come out from her. But they are saying, no attitudes of no separateness. No separation. Wow! Leading to right human relations and a world at peace. You know what this right human relation is? Homosexuality, bisexuality, lesbianism, and so on and so on. This is the right human relations. The coming world teacher will be mainly concerned not with the result of past error and inadequacy, but with the requirements of a new world order and with the reorganization of the social structure. What you and I know of the, of the society we live in, it must be changed. It must be changed. Do we see that happening? Yes, I know. Yes. Agenda, Agenda 21. Agenda 21, which unfortunately we don't have time in. Write down Agenda 21, see for yourself what, is, what that actually is. Sustainable development and I don't want to talk more about that. But thank you, brother. Now, let's see uh, Alice Bay. What was her task or what was her uh, main purpose for living on this world according to her? Now, we find a disciple in the new, despite discipleship in the new age, forgetting the things that lie behind, I will strive towards my higher spiritual possibilities. 
I dedicate myself anew to the service of the coming one and will do all I can to prepare men's minds and hearts for that event. I have no other life intention. These people were serious. And they are still serious. They were serious that this Christ was coming. She also says, prepare men for the reappearance of the Christ. This is your first and greatest duty. This is what this devil, the demon, told um, Alice Bailey. This is your greatest duty, to make the way for this Christ. Not Jesus Christ, but for Christ. Wow. And we don't need to read this, but the Tibetan has asked me to make, the, make it clear that when he is speaking of the Christ, he is referring to his official name as head of the hierarchy. And we will always find in the writings of Bailey that she is referring to the hierarchy. And they are none other than demons. And this Christ is the head of the hierarchy. Christ works for all men irrespective of their faith. He does not belong to the Christian world any more than to the Buddhist, the Mohammedan or any other faith. Isn't that interesting? doesn't matter what uh, religion you belong to. Isn't this what the society is teaching us today? Isn't this what we... Oh, come on, let's unite. And the universal Christ will satisfy them all. Didn't uh, Tainar de Shabi say that? It will satisfy them all. Doesn't matter if you are Christian, doesn't matter if you are a Buddhist, doesn't matter if you are a Muslim. Muslims are looking forward to the Imam Mahdi. And they say that Imam Mahdi is this universal Christ. There is no need for any man to, to join the Christian church in order to be affiliated with Christ. Is this biblical, yes or no? No. Because Jesus says, upon this rock, I, buy, I build my church. This is an onslaught. This is an attack on Jesus Christ himself. And you have to love your fellow man and recognize the divinity in all faiths, faith and all beings and rule your daily love with love. There is divinity in all faiths. You see, when you stand up and give a presentation of this, people look at you as a radical, as a fundamentalist. But it is because society has been changed. And of course, when people are looking for, you know, recognize the divinity in all faiths, if you stand up and say something else, you are a fundamentalist. And what did we see last presentation? What will happen to them? They will be silenced. No, let us see uh, Alice Bailey's words, and I'm and I'm and I have some questions, and let us see what she, how she is, because this question, these questions, you could also, you know, ask what the Bible says about this question, what Ellen White is saying upon this subject. So what are some of the signs that point to his, not Jesus, but to this universal Christ return? Now let us see. The reappearance of the Christ, page 15. First of all, he will come to a world which is essentially one world. So it doesn't need to be a, a, a peace, but it is essentially one world. Now the Bible says in 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 3, but when they speak of peace and safety, what comes upon them? Sudden destruction comes upon them. And unfortunately, the Bible says that this will be better. The Bible says that a, a, a last time of trouble is come up, coming upon this world. And, but according to them, this is what it is. The radio, the press, and the dissemination of news will make his coming different to that of any previous messenger. 
The swift mode of transportation will make him available to countless millions. YouTube, BBS, CNN, The Guardian, and so on. And by boat, rail, and plane, they can reach him through television. His face can be made familiar to all, and verily, I, every eye shall see him. They are quoting the Bible. We saw that this is not biblical. Every eye shall see him in the sense that Christ will be up in the cloud. Not that you will see Jesus through media, on your iPad. Oh, Jesus has come. No, no, no. But according to them, and this is what will happen, and that's why it is important because Jesus, Jesus was asked by the disciples, what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of thee? Hmm? What did Jesus say? Take heed that no man deceive you. Deception will be so great in the, in, in the last days. Deception. If we don't know what is true, we will be deceived. If we don't know what the Bible says, we will be deceived. So in these times of peace, we need to take our time and use it wisely. Because Jesus says false prophets will come. And as my brother said in the break, um, even the elect will be deceived. What a shame. What a shame. It was possible. Sorry? It was possible. Mm. If it were possible, the very elect. Yes, thank you. Now, page 19. What will be the signs? There is also a unique revival of the ancient teaching of the Buddha. And, it's, and it is penetrating into the Western, Western countries and finding devoted adherents in every land. The teachings of Buddha, Buddhism, but she's also meaning spiritualism. Is spiritualism getting bigger, yes, uh, bigger in this country and in Europe, yes or no? Oh, yes. And spiritualism will play a pivotal role. And she is saying, Spiritualism will be bigger and bigger. What does the Bible say? Spiritualism will be. The Buddha is the symbol of enlightenment. This is a word that they like to use. And there is everywhere today a unique emphasis upon life. It is on the foundation of this teaching that Christ will raise the superstructure of the brotherhood of men. For right human relations are an expression of the love of God. They will constitute man's major and next demonstration of divinity. So through spiritualism, man is immortal and man is divine. Will be another sign. Alright, let us take another question. What are the three conditions that the Christ has set that must be met by us before he will return? Because you know, Jesus Christ has put some preconditions for us. For example, preaching the word. The Gospel. Now, what is he talking about? This other Christ. The knowledge that he is ready and anxious publicly to appear to his loved humanity only adds to the sense of general frustration and another very vital question arises. For what period of time must we endure, struggle and fight? The reply comes with clarity. He will come unfailingly when a measure of peace has been restored as an essential one world, do you, do you remember? When the principle of sharing is at least in process of controlling economic affairs. Ah, I was here in April talking about this new world economic order and do you remember redistribution of wealth? What you owe my brother is what I also owe. What you own, your, your house is my house. When the principle of sharing is at least in process of controlling economic affairs. When the churches have begun to clean house, hmm, that's, that's interesting, then he can and will come, then the kingdom of God will be publicly recognized and will no longer be a thing of dreams and of ideals. Question. What did Jesus say about the kingdom of God? Would it be on this earth? No. What are they saying? 
the kingdom of God will be public, come here on earth. You meet the condition of peace, principle of sharing, redistribution, redistribution of wealth, and churches need to adapt themselves to this new philosophy. To enable him today to walk among men requires a world which will have in, in, enough effective workers and spiritually minded people to change the atmosphere of our planet. And then Christ can and He will come. Summary. The measure of peace must be restored in the world. The principle of sharing should be in the process of controlling economic affairs. The energy of goodwill must be manifesting, leading to right human relations. Churches must begin to clean, cap, clean house. There must be enough effective workers to change the atmosphere of the planet. And in another quote, she says, money must be given to help establish right human relations. And they say when these points are fulfilled, this universal Christ will come. Now, now comes the interesting part as well. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, who you know said, um, who, who said that um, you know Lucifer is light and all these uh, things? Now she wrote an essay called "Studies in Occultism," and the first part of the first chapter is called "The Esoteric Character of the Gospels." Now look, check this out. She is saying she is quoting a Matthew chapter twenty-four, verse three. She is saying, "Tell us." When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy presence, and of the consummation of the age? Now, is that what you read in your Bible? Yes or no? In my Bible it says, what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the age? But she is saying, of the sign of thy presence, and of the consummation of the age. Now, there is a footnote. And let us see the footnote of what she is writing. Footnote. Matthew uh, 24, verse 3. The sentences itemized are those which stand corrected in the New Testament after the recent revision in 1881 of the version of 18, uh, 1611. What is she saying? What is she saying? You know which Bible this is? James. The King James. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky hates the King James Bible. Mm -hmm. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky and the occultists hate the majority text because the majority text is what, uh, what the King James, for example, is based upon. And she, because the King James says, in this case, for the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age. But then she says, uh uh, we need to use the 1881 Bible, which is none other than the minority text, which two professors by the name of, uh, I think it was, uh, can you help me guys? It was Prescott and Hort, thank you. Prescott and Hort, who came up with this new, new uh, manuscript, and since then, almost all Christianity is using this text. But Helena Petrovna Blavatsky says the King James Bible is not a Bible that we are. Yes. The NIV is based on the 1881. Almost, almost all the modern Bibles that we know are based upon the 1881, the Kurt Aland, uh, and so on. First of all, so she says, I thought this was fascinating. So, and she says, no, 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 but we, these sentences are idolized are those which stand corrected in the New Testament. And uh, because she says, uh, I should have continued, of the version of 1611, the King James or the majority text, which version is full of errors? Depends on how you see it. Voluntary and involuntary. She says, the word presence for coming and the consummation of the age, now standing for the end of the world, have altered or made the whole meaning 
even for the most sincere Christians, listen to this, if we accept the Adventists. <laughs> I want to tell you that you belong to the right group. If she is saying, if she is pointing out a group which she doesn't like, mm -hmm. that means that you are in the right group. And that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. She says, we are not supposed to use the sign of the coming, but instead the presence and the consummation of the aid. Because the end, because this world will not really end in so, but instead this Christ will come with his presence. And thus we will usher in the new age. But there is one group that is opposing it, and she says it is the Adventists. Mm -hmm. She also says this, and, and this is fascinating as well. It is a continuation. So, on the other hand, at no time since the Christian era, have the precursor signs described in Matthew apply so graphically and forcibly to any epoch as they do to our own times. So she is saying that, yes, this Christ is coming soon. When has nation arisen against nation more than at this time? When have famines, another name for the destitute poiperism and the famished multitudes for proletariat been more cruel earthquakes, la la la, as for the last few years? Listen to this. Milan, millenarian, millenarian, millenarians and Adventists of robust faith may go on saying that the coming of the canonized Christ is near at hand and prepare themselves for the end of the world. Theosophists, at any rate, some of them who understand the hidden meaning of the universally expected avatars, messiahs, Show, 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 and I don't know what that is, and Christ know that it is no end of the world, but the consummation of the age, i.e., the close of a cycle which is now fast approaching. She's saying that Adventists are completely off the map. And if she's saying that Adventists are completely off the map, that tells me that Adventists know the truth. If our readers have forgotten the concluding passages of the article, the signs of the times, now did the Adventists also have an article or a paper mm -hmm. called the signs of the times? Interesting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In Lucifer, their paper was called Lucifer. For October last, let them read them over and they will plainly see the meaning of this particular cycle. She is saying the Adventists are completely off. They don't even know what they are doing. This gives me such a hope. Now, at that time in your life, you were 20 years old or so. Mm -hmm. Had you ever heard of a Seventh-day Adventist? Never in my life. In no, that meeting... He didn't talk about Seventh-day Adventist. He talked strictly about Adventist. Well, they just talked... But they did... The word Adventist yeah. was mentioned. The priest was telling us that uh, necromancy, as I mentioned earlier, is the belief that the dead have entered into a higher state of existence, etc. And he says, for centuries, Friendly demon spirits have worked diligently to establish and uphold in the religious convictions of all people the belief that man has an immortal soul. See? Then he boasted about the fact that the master was so smart in that he had this, deceived the whole world even this, in this age of great scientific knowledge and, and, and understanding. Then one person put his hand up and died. He says, yeah, yes, we want to say something. He says, what about the Adventists? <laughs> you can't count them to see regarding the, uh, the, the state of the dead. And I got a question. What about, the, how come they, 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 they can't be brought under the great deception? 
The priest said, you, you're, you're right. I apologize, says, here, I, I made a mistake. When I said that the, the, all the millions of people living on the face of this planet, everybody, you know, was honoring the, the great master. I forgot the Adventists. There's so few in number when you figure the, the billions and all people, I didn't even mention, think of mentioning him. So I'm sorry. Then he says, secondly, the reason why they can't be brought into the great deception, let me explain about it. Now he said, my next statement is going to upset some of you. But what I'm telling you is the honest truth. It, it, it is factual. It's reality. The fact that the Adventists observe the biblical Sabbath of creation and reverence the Creator on that day, it makes it impossible for the spirits to deceive them. They are given very special help and great in, in spiritual insight. And he said, under these conditions, they are not ordinary people. And that stayed with me, just like this. And when I heard the, 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 the word Adventist, when Sarah told me later on, which we're going to cover later, I asked him, I said, what did the mission belong to? He said, I'm a seven Adventist. What's that again? He said, I'm a seven Adventist. I said, is that the same thing as, as Adventist? Oh yeah, he says, a lot of people call, call us the Adventist. They don't talk about, about the seven days. Same thing. Boy, I was interested. I bet you were. Now, I wanted to know what his Bible said. Yeah, I bet you did. Because that was the one group yeah. that the, under question only, the high priest of the demonic uh -huh. uh, uh, worship house, yeah. The thing that he had said to you was, this is the one group that can't be deceived. That's right. And so somewhere back inside that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that resistance you had had mm -hmm. came out and you awoke. A few months later, that experience, unique experience, was instrumental in helping me make a decision for Christ. And also I had no hesitation to join myself to God's commandment keeping people because of the fact that I knew what kind of people they were. And after having had 28 Bible studies in one week, I started to keep the, the Sabbath, uh, the, um, you know, fit forever. But you see, the time that I had these Bible studies, four hours per evening, we started at 7 o'clock and finished at 11 o'clock at night. We had this Bible study similar to what you, have, what you showed me the other day, that you have in your pocket. The Bible studies were about an hour. The, there were questions, and then you looked at the verses that they gave you in the Bible, and you had your answer. It was so fantastic. And uh, the Spirit of God was really ministering to me the graces of redemption. Every moment of that, of all those Bible studies was precious. Precious, precious, precious. Roger, at that time, your major language was French. You did not speak English, and all of this happened in the French language mm -hmm. in Montreal. How long after you became a Seventh-day Adventist, or after you learned of Seventh-day Adventists, did you read the book Great Controversy by Ellen White? Well, I um, joined the church, uh, I, mean, I mean, I first had a Bible study in October of 46. In April of 47, I was baptized into the church. In October, uh, September of that year, Hilda and I got married. And the French church in Montreal gave us, as a wedding gift, the Conflict of the Ages series. And I had not read the Greek controversy up to, up to then. But then you read it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what went through your mind when you read the book Great Controversy, yeah. thinking back on the experience you'd had maybe just a year or so before? That's right. What went through I your said, mind? This, per this person is inspired. This person has got knowledge that nobody else has on the face of the earth, except, you know, the spiritist that I was mentioning, because it's so unique. And Adventists understand the right size and the right characteristics for the advent of Christ. And that's why she is so upset with them. Adventists, they don't understand, but we as Theosophists, who understand the hidden meaning, I mean, why should the Bible be based upon secrecy or hidden? I mean, are you with me? You don't need to be a theologian or rocket scientist to understand the Bible. That's what the Protestant Reformation thought. That you yourself, by the power of the Holy Spirit, can understand what the Word of God says. You don't need a priest to tell you what the Bible says. 
Now, the second coming will be preceded by the appearances of the master, of masters. And this is fascinating, so please, be focused. Let, we are going to see the, the quotes from Alice A. Bailey, and then we're going to see what the Bible says and the spirit of prophecy. Listen to this. Six of the masters, as yet quite unknown to the average occult student, have already sought physical incarnation. So these, so these masters will be of physical incarnation. You don't understand it yet, but I will show you how. Who are these demons? They are part of the hierarchy. They are demons. Demons or evil angels will be in human form to precede before the apparent or, or the second coming. Yeah. The second coming, not of Jesus Christ, but of the universal Christ. You will note, therefore, how the three divine aspects are united in one great movement to bring in the kingdom of God. And that the first step towards this love for consummation is the appearances of the masters upon the physical plane and then some, uh, somewhat later the reappearance of the Christ. So these demons or these so-called masters will come before the Christ and they will announce that the Christ is coming. Isn't that interesting? This is coming from the occult world. Have, do, you, do, you kind of, do you kind of see the picture of what is really going on? Because I'm going to show you Ellen White, what she is saying. She says what will happen in the last days. Alice A. Bailey said this. Now, what does the true prophet? Evil angels in the form of men will talk with those who know the truth. They will misinterpret and misconstrue the statement of the messengers of God. Says that have Seventh-day Adventists forgotten the warning given in the sixth chapter of Ephesians? We are engaged in a warfare against the host of the dark of darkness. Unless we follow our leader closely, Satan will obtain the victory over us. And then she says, evil angels in the form of believers will work in our ranks to bring in a strong spirit of unbelief. Let not even this discourage you, but bring a true heart to the help of the Lord against the powers of satanic agencies. These powers of evil will assemble in our meetings, not to receive a blessing, but to counterwork the influences of the Spirit of God. Satan has his allies in men, and evil angels in human form will appear to men. Didn't Alice A. Bailey say the same thing? <coughs> will appear to men and present before them such glowing representation of what they will be able to do if they will only heed their suggestions that often they change their penitence for defiance. I call upon those who would have eternal life to, to break every yoke. The enlightenment of the understanding must become a part of the experience. Sin has darkened the reasoning, powers, and hell is triumphing. Oh, will not men cease to trust in human beings? Cannot they discern the excellency of the perfect rule of righteousness that God has given? What do you think? Huh? Isn't it fascinating quotes? Alice A. Bailey and Ellen White talks about the same things, but one of them was saying, this is from God, and the other says, this is from Satan. What does that tell you about Ellen White? It must have... She must have had some kind of spiritual understanding of these things, right? It must be, it must have been so. And will this Christ come in a physical body? Thirdly, I told you that Christ might come in person and walk among men as he did before. This has not yet taken place, but plans are being laid which we enable him to do so. 
Now, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, And then shall the wicked... Now, the context of chapter 2 is the system of the Antichrist. The man of sin, who sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is the, the system of the Antichrist. But it is interesting that at the same way as chapter 2 talks about the system of the anti, this anti-Christian power, it, it somehow it feels that in, 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 in verse 8, that it changes form from a system to a person. Do, do you see what I'm trying to present? In the, in the, beginning, in the beginning of chapter 2, it talks about the system that this system will have a man, that he will think that he is God, and that he will not be in a Jewish temple, so to speak, but the, the, the temple that is used there is the word, the Greek word, anaus, which if you look in the Pauline passages, it always talks about the Christian church. So people who are saying that the Antichrist will come, you know, and he will sit in a Jewish temple, that, that's, not, that's wrong. Because the context of it is that a man is God, and that he is in the Christian church. That is what they are saying. But then suddenly they shift from the system to verse 8, to a person. Because then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of His coming. So when Jesus comes, this will be destroyed. Parousia, this is the Greek word. Then it will, at the coming of Jesus Christ, this verse will be destroyed. But look at this in verse 9. Even Him who's coming. Now these two words, who, coming and coming, they are, they are the same. So if Jesus Christ has a coming, do you think that this wicked will have a coming as well? Do, do, do you see the point I'm trying to make? Jesus has a baby, Jesus has a coming, but also even him, the wicked, whose parousia, whose coming, is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and light wonders. It tells me that Satan will have a coming as well. Satan will have a coming as well upon this earth, but it will be before Christ's coming. It will be before Christ's coming, because Christ, when He comes back, He will destroy the wicked. So how can Satan come before Christ? Do you see the point? And Satan, when He comes, because it is the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. This is what Satan will do. Satan will work power and, and, and uh, power and signs and lying wonders. This text, power and signs and lying wonders, it is almost a direct quote from Acts chapter 2, verse 22, where the Bible is describing Jesus' ministry that he did signs and miracles and so on. So this Satan will personify Jesus will do miracles. And it says that in um, the wicked, it's given a W, mm. a capital W. Mm. Is that capitalized meant to make a noun? It yeah. is, yes. Is. That's yes. the meant to capitalize and make a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at this. The great controversy. Satan is not permitted to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent. So Satan will not come in the sense that, you know, as Jesus comes. He is not permitted. But Satan will come personating Jesus Christ, working mighty miracles. Now, what did we read that? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And men will fall down and worship him as Jesus Christ. We shall be commanded to worship this being, whom the Lord will glorify as Christ. Every time the esoteric philosophies and writings, we see that this Christ, this Christ, Ellen White also says, as Christ, she is spot on. What shall we do? Tell them that Christ, Jesus Christ, has warned us against such a foe 
who is man's worst enemy, yet who claims to be God, and that when Christ shall make his appearance, it will be with power and great glory, accompanied by 10,000 times 10,000 angels, and thousands of thousands, and that when he shall come, we shall know his voice. If you don't know how Jesus is coming back, you will be deceived. I'm ending. We're finishing. Benjamin Cream. He is a channel and key publicist for this Maitreya, who is supposed to, see, who is going to be this universal Christ. And this universal Christ is none other than Satan. And they have ma channeled messages from my Maitreya. And it has been used as information documents for the United Nations. Do you see how the United Nations is once again involved in the spiritual aspect of the unity of world religions under Maitreya, the universal Christ? And this man, Grant, has written many books, which are, of course, channel books discussing Maitreya's appearance on earth. It is interesting that he wrote, and it is an interesting title, The Reappearance of the Christ, the same as Alice Bailey's and the Masters of Wisdom, he, see, he says, and Maitreya makes this claim, so it's not even Benjamin Kremp. He says, many of you still will see me when? Soon. Soon. Share with your brothers this joyous expectation and tell them that Maitreya, their friend, their brother, their teacher of all, has come. It's interesting that he makes the statement, the trial, um, he says that he will see the trial. Mm. That makes sense, he was made in 1918, he's not a, a young man. No, no, exactly. And he's saying that he will see the trial come back. Mm. If, you watch it, if you see his um, ex, his, uh, his child. Exactly. He actually makes that statement. Thank you for the comment. And you see as well that this is my Treya's logo and it involves the unity of all world religions Islam, Christianity, uh, Judaism, Hinduism and uh, all kinds of uh, religions When asked about the role of the Pope listen to this When asked about the role of the Pope, the Maitreya said this The Master Jesus, Maitreya, will take over the throne of St. Peter in Rome and the true apostolic succession will begin. This event is now imminent following the declaration of the Christ. It could well be that the last present Pope will be the last. Of course, that will not sort. Yes. Now look at this. This Maitreya is saying that I am coming soon. Now, would it, would it be interesting that a big television network by the name of CNN, have you heard of mm -hmm. CNN? They made a commercial for this Maitreya. And it aired on television. Now we, we just get there. All right. This is the commercial that aired on uh, CNN. Let's watch. <laughs> If the Christ or Buddha returned today, would you recognize him? The one awaited by all major religions has come when we least expected it. He is ready to emerge openly very soon. Look for a bright star shining in the sky night and day as a sign of his public emergence. CNN, this commercial, which they have. Alice, Alice, Alice Ibedi had already said that one, that, you know, the coming, coming, the signs of, of... Yeah, she said exactly that, that the, exactly, thank you for the point, that, that this Christ, you know, we will use all kinds of media, television, we will use uh, newspapers, and now, now even internet, and so on, which will propagate that the Christ is coming. And he said a very good question. If the Christ of Buddha returned today, would you recognize him? The one who has been awaiting by all major religions 
that person is coming. Amazing. It is full of problems, but this Maitreya will come. Just as the Bible, just as the Spirit of Prophecy said. The previous time that you get turned away, he appeared in Ethiopia. I think it was. And uh, was exactly. Away, he appeared in Ethiopia. And in 1988, he appeared in Nairobi. I believe it's in uh, Kenya. Oh, so Kenya. It's in Kenya. And uh, he appeared in 1888 from the nothing. He looked like Jesus, mm. he healed like Jesus, he talked full of wisdom just like Jesus mm. and 6,000 people were there and they were, they were worshipping him as Christ. Mm. He appeared out of nowhere. And out of he nowhere. Disappeared. And the interesting thing is that, that he also he walked and disappeared. Six thousands of people worshipped him as Christ. Can you believe that? And here he is. People lying and worshipping him, worshipping him as God. He appeared at a, a Christian mass rally and they, they weren't expecting this as a kid. What would happen if he would come into our churches? Are we so rooted in Christ? Are we so rooted in the Bible that we are saying no to our feelings? But we let God's word uh, rule what we do. I don't know. But but with the uh, United Religious Organization is coming this economical uh, ecumenism. And I think this will this prepares the way of the coming of mm. exactly. So this is just laying the foundation for everything. And uh, and I I I need to say this. We cannot join it. Because we have seen in the last presentation of what is going on there. We are seeing that what this movement, who is, will be the top, and how can you worship Satan? Ellen White says, as the second appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ draws near, satanic agencies are moved from beneath. Satan will not only appear as a human being, but he will personate Jesus Christ. And the world that has rejected the truth will receive him as the Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. The last great delusion is soon to open before us. Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. So closely will the counterfeit resemble, listen to this, the true that resemble the true that it will be impossible to distinguish between them except by the Holy Scriptures. If we don't know what the Bible says, if we don't know what the good word of God says, it will be impossible. And it is time now to read our Bibles, to fill our minds with the word of God. In the temptations of Jesus, he answered every temptation to the devil. It is written. It is written. And in uh, Matthew 24, and... Uh, Verse, verse 24, it says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch as if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Uh, behold, if I have told you before, wherefore, if they say, so if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe him not. Believe him not. Thank you for the passage, because we need to understand it. 
that Christ and false prophets and false Christ will come. <coughs> and when we hear that, uh -uh, we are not even interested. And as you said, by their testimony, every statement and every miracle must be tested. Thank you. And the last quote, I think, we are living in the time of the end. The fast fulfilling signs of the time declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are portentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening, they are strengthening for the last great crisis. And we've seen that today, yes or no? But when, when these things had, had been written, when did L.N.G. White wrote this? Around at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th. And this, this that was not happening yet much at that time. No, no. no it was like the scale of happenings then. So if it was only a little then, and you see a great bit now, how much closer are we to seeing this actually happen? Mm -hmm. We are so close, brothers and sisters. And she says in the last, uh, the last sentence is very, very important. Great changes are soon to take place in our world and the final movements will be rapid ones. This world that we now see, this world that we now recognize will soon be changed. Great changes when it comes to the society we live in, when it comes to the economic order that we now know as capitalism, it will soon be gone. And, uh, and the final movements will be rapid ones. And the question is, are we ready for, not only for the coming of Christ, but also for the last great crisis? Because many times we talk about, get ready for Jesus. But Jesus, before Jesus, there would be a last great crisis. And we know that Satan will come before Jesus comes. And now is the time when we have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, to first of all, Study what the Bible says. Study what Ellen G. White says. Study and see for yourself. The Bible says study for, to show thyself approved unto God. And then, as we have studied it, let us go and share this message with other people. Because this message is not a hope of... Um, this is not a bad message. This is not a message of problems. But this is a message of hope. Because if I would only talk about the problems and the difficulties, yes. But I am pointing to you to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because He will come back and He is providing you a place in the kingdom. Not a kingdom on this earth, but a kingdom in heaven. But the kingdom of God can begin in your heart. That you have a peace in your heart. You can meet the future without any problems, without any troubles. And I believe with all of my heart that Christ, not Satan, well Satan as well, but that this Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this is my question today. Do you want to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus? Please let us stand and close with a prayer because we want to be these people who are standing and awaiting our Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these two presentations. I know that uh, it had, they have, they, they've been so long, and, um, but I felt it was important to share it with your people. And I thank you, Lord, for these people, although, um, although I would have dreamt of people who, more people would have come, but you see these people who came, and I praise your name, Lord, that they came.
And I pray, Lord, that you bless them in a special way. And every one of us, and those people who are watching at YouTube and on the internet, that they will be prepared as well for the second coming of Christ and for the last great crisis that is coming upon this earth. This message is once again not a message of, of, of problems. It is part of it, of course, because it needs to be exposed. But this is a message of hope. This is a message of hope that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who died for us on, the ca on Calvary, who died for us on that cross, who paid for our sins with His death, that He is coming soon. Help us, Lord, to take time with You and help us, Lord, to get to know You, Lord, and help us to, to really see who You are and to show us. Thank you Lord once again and help us to, to stay, to be ready and stay ready. And we thank you Lord that you are coming soon, very, very soon. We pray in Jesus name and thank you that you have listened to our prayers. May your name be lifted up high. This is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.